Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. Technically it's a Brian's choice, but I'll be honest, I couldn't really find anything that interests me interested me that I didn't already want to check out a full album for and I didn't want to spoil any of that and just kind of ran into option paralysis or deep paralysis. I don't know. I, I picked a special selection. <laughs> This one comes at us from Turtle Friends. This song has some weirdly pleasant sounding dissonance that I don't think I've really heard anywhere else. So, let's dive into this. I don't know what to expect, but for some reason with Midair Thief makes me think post-rock. Uh, I don't know if you've heard Midair Thief before. The name is familiar. Uh, the track we're checking out is called These Chains. However... On the YouTube link I was given, it's called Ah, These Chains. So I don't know which one is more accurate, but the idea is consistent. Let's dive in and see what's going on. I've never heard anything like this. If we've heard Midair Thief on the channel before, it was something completely different. production on all of this is bonkers. The panning, the placement, the spatialness. And all of that microtonal sliding, microtonal sliding. Love that bass line.
was a fun little sound. This is one of those uh, joys I get from running this channel is being shown absolutely bonkers stuff like this. When I walk away from a track and think, what did I just listen to? Uh, I want y'all to know. I'm really enjoying myself. Uh, it may not always seem like that, and I probably put on faces that look more like discomfort than anything else. Uh, but I am genuinely enjoying having my boundaries pushed uh, and my understanding of what music is or could do expanded. With that said, I think the only way I can describe this is a whimsically refreshing anxiety attack. Not a phrase that makes much sense to me outside of this context, but you know what? It's kind of perfect for this. Um... You know it's really interesting too? I think my first influence for this, if I were to try to draw a line to what genres this person may have listened to that influences their writing for something like this, is Renaissance? Does anybody else get that? I don't know what it is about this song, but it feels like a digitally electronically perverted renaissance duet i don't know where these sentences come from i'm not thinking them up they just kind of flow out of my mouth they're, they're... nothing i say makes any sense when i talk about this song <laughs> let's break it down let's talk about some smaller ideas that maybe i don't need to have weird phrases for There's a lot of flourish in this track. In fact, our main idea throughout most of this up until our final minute or so is flourish. It's these little whirlwinds of sounds. Uh, they're not really melodic. They're not really harmonic. Honestly, they feel like ideas that should be sitting as a tertiary idea outside of a core sound, song. Um, you know, chord progression, a melody, and then these little flourishy things. Um, but they decided to make the whole song out of this. And I find that to be fascinating because it worked. Um, I, I think there's very few situations where I would tell somebody, hey... Uh, constant eighth notes rising and falling in in thirds um, do two of them uh, why not <laughs> uh, and pitch shift them constantly uh, also start them at different pitches uh, so that they're never really in tune with each other uh, and there you go that's your song 
put a chord progression under it on an on an acoustic guitar. Uh, like it just seems so ridiculous. Feeling more like an exercise or a what if. Uh, could I do this? What would that sound like? Let's go ahead and find out. Not <laughs> I have this sound in my head. Let's 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 make a song out of this. Um, it's one of those things you put into your your DAW or your uh, sheet music program and you listen to it and you're like that's kind of neat and it just kind of sits there it's in your neat ideas folder forever uh, <laughs> and and they did it they pulled it off they they did the impossible what how uh it just kind of blows my mind that is what most of this song is it's just these wavy warbly things on the side um and there's, you know, there's other ornamental ideas around it. We do have acoustic guitar, I think, doing chord progression underneath it. Um, that, like, makes up most of it. And it dances so wildly between consonants and dissonance. There's some sections in here that are absolutely gorgeous and others that send a shiver down my spine and you never really know what you're getting because compositionally there's nothing here to tell you that. A lot of this feels like they have one idea. It's rising and falling. They copied it somewhere else, pitch shifted the whole thing up a little bit, let them play, and then mod wield the pitch randomly sometimes you'll get these really big sweeps up sometimes you'll get these smaller sweeps down sometimes they'll kind of go back up and down kind of give this bouncy feeling um and because of that they may have been consonant when they were programmed in what you know what's actually there note wise but the production on them is as far as I could tell, unpredictable. And so at any moment, we could be in something consonant, and they're like, mm, pitch shift, and now we're in dissonance. <laughs> now we're in a different key. Um, and, and it's happening at both times. Both of these ideas are being pitch shifted in all sorts of different ways. And like I said, there's nothing in the music. It's not like they're leaning into this dissonance compositionally. They just randomly decide to shift the entire pitch of this idea up uh, in real time. Randomly, seemingly. Just out of nowhere, we'll, we'll be in dissonance. Um, but it kind of works. Like, as much as I cringed in during some of the, the harsher moments, um, the wildness of it, the untamed element of these two main ideas, it's neat. It creates a tension in the music that sells that anxiety that I had mentioned but doesn't lean into that sound exclusively. I don't know. I, I, I wish I had more explanation for why this works, but honestly, I don't even know how it works. <laughs> Much less why it sounds good together. Uh, I do want to put some some spotlight on the production, though. This is just phenomenal. Uh, I get the idea... That it's two guitars, uh, two acoustic guitars, at least one acoustic guitar, maybe a clean electric, um, a bass guitar, a drum kit, and a vocalist of some sort. This is a rock band, right? I don't think that there's any synths in here. Maybe there are that I missed, uh, but everything's being digitally manipulated, so it's quite possible that everything is a synth. I, I don't know, without seeing a concert or, you know, reading reading uh, the personnel list uh but the placement of these instruments and manipulating how they sound and tweaking 
parameters of the sound that I don't even think I have the knowledge to tell you what parameter it is. These sounds are being twisted and stretched and squashed and smashed and bonked in ways that I, I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of bonkers all around. Um, but they're also just mixed so well on top of that. And I think that's probably the strongest component here and what allows all of this to feel less like a smorgasbord of noises and more like a cohesive song with a theme and a feeling to it all is the production of it. The separation between these sounds, the clarity of them all, the placement of where they are in the the listener's ear and um, you know all that is taken into consideration too when you tweak a sound, when you stretch it out, when you pitch shift it up three octaves, uh, when you manipulate any of them, I think there's attention to how should we change the production on the mix on it as well, um, uh, in order to achieve a cohesion and whoever engineered this, whether it's, you know, a group of two who made the sounds and then mixed or three, you know, a master on top of that. Whatever the engineering team is, huge huge uh, pat on the back for this because this song could easily be a mess um it really is a team a team effort putting this together oh and that doesn't even incorporate the fuzz like okay so here's another thing that was wild is the fuzz there is this one section at the end where you could hear this compression or distortion on the bottom it's kind of slowly fading in this this this, uh, this crunch coming in at the bottom and it gains volume until it washes over everything but then it gets tweaked in a way that feels like it got twisted and then explodes into sparkles this was near the end uh, i wish i'd kept a timestamp. i might have, i might have rewound it right now just to uh, showcase that again it had to been after the three and a half minute mark though, maybe the four minute mark even. Just bonkers. This wasn't it it doesn't seem like this was compression put on an instrument. This was compression as an instrument. And that's just what? How would you come to how would you come to that? Why is is of course clear as day. They they have put a, a proof right here on why you would do that. It is phenomenal and I love it. But how do you get to that thought? Um That was just awesome. It it almost felt like what a reverse cymbal crash would do, where you kind of get the lead in to the larger sound that helps transition into something new, which is exactly what it did, but they did it with compression rather than just reversing a, a cymbal track. Um it's just so it's so cool. Why? Huh? Um do I have any other questions <laughs> regarding this? Um, there's probably so much I missed still. I'm just flabbergasted. I don't know that I enjoyed this. I certainly enjoyed being subjected to it. Could I listen to a whole half hour of this? Maybe, how long? 45 minutes. That's not too bad, honestly. I don't know. The novelty might wear off halfway through the album, and then I'm just listening to all this noise. Although the flip side is maybe each song is just as emotionally resonant as this one was, and it's going to be a very powerful listen. I don't know. I I'm left with more questions and answers. Uh, if anyone wants to give me some insight on uh, their perspective... Uh, their reading of it, let me know, because, I mean, I, I I was here for the ride. I'm not really sure what happened. Things were just blurring by me on this roller coaster, and I just, I, I enjoyed my time with it. Um, I vaguely remember there being words at the beginning, so I'm going to go uh, look those up real quick, and then uh, we'll wrap this up.
Well, I had a tough time explaining the music, and that is my forte. I had no shot at these lyrics. <laughs> a weary and worn day, pushing against the ground. I turn my back against the rising sky and close my dry eyes. These tangled chains, they hover above the shadows which close in as they continue to gain speed and slowly tighten. That's the first stanza. I only remember there being words at the beginning. Uh, and this is translated from something? Korean. To English. Um, so maybe there are more syllables in the... I don't know. Basically, I don't know where the second stanza is placed. It might be in everything past the intro, or it might also have been in the intro. Continues on, though, says, A bloodied knife. Someone keeps brandishing it, gathering wood for the fire as they spit asphalt all over the place. My arm, drained of strength. It trembles uncontrollable. I hit the hardening wall and, and am slowly pushed away. This is so vague and metaphorical and kind of visceral in, in the visual aspect. But I have no idea what it means. It certainly sounds like somebody who's not having a good day, though. <laughs> That's the best I got out of it, is, uh, is they feel weary and worn down and chained up and hitting walls, being drained of strength. Uh, it's just not a good day for them. So I'm going to extend this again. If anyone has any information to help me understand this one let me know down in the comments these are my thoughts on midair thief these chains uh when you're done posting your comments insights opinions perspectives all sorts of stuff head into the description box you'll find a link to linktree which takes you to this menu you can find my music ways to support the channel a link to the discord server and so much more Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. That wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow. We're going to check out some requests from the comment section. Till next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening.